Well, here we are, John, off the river, and what a pleasure. Oh, it's great to get together with you, Jack. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, we should have some fun with this, and uh, hopefully people can learn a few little tricks and well, I'm you know, twists and turns. And because I'm not a nymph tier. I mean, I tie well, I know, some yeah, I know you're, 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 I tie a lot of dry flies as, as well as nymphs, but uh, I do tie a lot of nymphs. Well, you're known for the nymph, the Copper John. Yeah, it's, it's done some good. It's <laughs> okay. got a few fish. All right, we're ready. We're here in Boulder, Colorado, and we're going to see how you tie the Copper John. Now, I noticed you started out, you got a hook in the vise. Yeah, I mean, we're just using a 52 TM, TMC 5262 as a two extra long hook. After playing around with a lot mm -hmm. of different hooks, a lot mm -hmm. of different hook models, whatnot, the, uh, the fly just dressed out best on this little two extra long 5262. I put a bead on, it can either be brass or tungsten. You want the big hole pointy back, and you'll find the reason for that here shortly. So let's just get our thread on here. Okay, no. now what kind of thread are you going to be using? I'm using, uh, what I like to use in these Copper Johns is uh, Wapsie's UTC thread. Mm -hmm. And they have 70 denier, 140 denier, 210 mm -hmm. denier, 280 denier. And I just use the bigger the fly, the bigger the denier. And the reason I like it is it just lays down a real nice smooth underbody, which is where I get my taper right. uh, for the copper. And that's what makes your copper john a lot different than a lot of other nymphs. Yep. It looks like the insect. A lot of other copper whatevers. Uh, but don't have that taper. I, I think that's really important. <laughs> Cup or whatever. I love that. Yeah. Okay. okay but anyways, okay, we got the bead on the hook. Next step, lead. And as a general rule, I put 13 wraps of lead, Jack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Pop it off. And for the different size copper drums, I use different size lead. Then what I do is I will shove that lead up into the bead. Ooh, that looks nice. That kind of locks the bead in there and also gives you, uh, gives you plenty of room to work back here for your, the rest of your Well, fly. I've learned something today right now, just locking that That's lead right cool in. Move, oh, it is. It's a cool move. Next step, add our 70 denier UTC thread. I see you're like at the halfway point there, aren't you? Yeah, it's just that's not really that critical uh, where you start your thread. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I mean, right in here, you're about halfway down the shank, right there, for kind of proportion, yeah, aren't you? Probably ball, yeah, probably ballpark. Yep. Uh, and then the next thing we do is lay our biots in. Now, these are goose biots? These are goose biots. Not this, turkey biots. Not turkey biots. Kind of a reddish brown. I know you've matched it. Now, you're putting one on at a time? I put one on at a time. Just, uh, I know some guys can put them on. Well, I know one guy. Puts it on both at the same time, Charlie Craven, but he can do a lot of things that, well, <laughs> that a lot of us can't do. There's a lot of good tires out there that have got it down. Some of us older folk have to kind yeah. of take it one step at a time. Yeah, just one step at a time. Okay, that's on the side. So we've got, we got our goose spots laid in there. Now I'm going to wrap back up over the goose spots, goose biots. And clip off the ends. Okay. You guys, you have to have the world's best selection of wires. We're uh, unbelievable. I'm looking right down Oops. through all that. Look at this. Isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> that is good little selection. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we're, uh, so we're gonna, and this is ultra wire, which right. is very important because it doesn't tarnish. It maintains its luster for the life of the fly. And I'll tie my wire in pretty far up. It just kind of helps build up the thorax and also build uniformity in the fly. And then we'll just wrap, nice even wraps back down. And that also starts building your little taper by laying right. the wire in there. I like and that. so now, with a thread, I'm going to build my taper. So we get a nice tapered abdomen. Fly looks better, fish is better. I just like it better. You know, I have and to mention, you said tarnish. I mean, I don't keep flies long enough to worry about tarnishing. <laughs> But that's all right. Then, then, then a little yeah. trick, but that regular copper wire tar tarnishes. Oh, I know fast. it does. I have to laugh. But, but what happens how it tarnishes because I drop the fly box in the water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I've been there. Well, here's a little trick I wanted to show you. You don't, okay. have, to, you don't have to do this, 
that after you get your taper build up, you can drop your bobbin over the wire. Put the bobbin so it's hanging on the wire. Right. Okay? And that puts a little tension, rearward tension on the wire. Let's lay that first one in a little better than that. I know you're real particular about this. Uh, but see that, that thread's just kind of laying up against the wire. Right. And it makes for a nice even wrap. Yep. Oh, and there's the copper. Now you tie this in a lot of different colors. You know, Jack, we start off with, just, I'm tying the original copper here, uh, just the natural copper, Copper John. And since then, uh, it's evolved into nine different colors. My and they're gosh. all just sitting right here. We've got copper, we've got copper brown, we've got silver, green, chartreuse, uh, red, blue, black, black and silver, a, a mm. zebra color. Here's a lot of the, the green, especially the mini Copper Johns that, uh, that I don't tie, that I buy from Umqua, size 22s <laughs> and 20s, and they're really great for Betas imitations. Yeah, well, the little black ones are too. Well, I know. Little yes. black 20s, 22s. Uh, it's uh, an all-purpose nymph, there's no question. You really hit on one. It's... You hit on the you hit on the nymph of all nymphs, and it, <laughs> it reflects in the being the number one selling fly that Umqua sells. Yeah, and it's gotten you know, pretty popular in Europe and Japan, and oh yeah. Uh, next thing I'm doing is I'm putting a little piece of holographic uh, silver flashaboo. You can use pearl flashaboo. You can use opal mirage flashaboo. Mm -hmm. uh, I just th that's. Not a etched in stone type of thing. We're, we're building our wing, our thorax, and uh, right now we're building our wing case. Okay, so you put that little uh, silver hol holographic flash boo right in the middle on top. Mm -hmm. Now, what's this you're using here? This is a okay. new stuff. This is one of my fi favorite materials going. It's called thin skin. Use it for wing cases, oh. wing pads. And I'm going to show you something here, a little trick on how to cut it. Oh, okay. So I'll just tie this piece in, and then I'll show you how, how you prepare it. And I tie this all the way up to behind the bead because we want it just kind of helps build a little uniformity. Mm -hmm. And then we'll wrap wrap that right back to the wire. Right. Uh, but um, and what I find the easiest way to cut it because you're cutting different widths mm -hmm. for different size flies is to hold the thin skin that you want to cut towards you, and then just cut the thickness, and then. What you do, this thin skin has a little paper back, the thin skin's on the front. Just take a little bodkin and peel it off. Oh, bodkin. You know, I've, I've tried to use my fingernails. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Okay. And then you just pull it off the piece of paper and you got your thin skin ready to go. Okay, we're making progress here. And then if you're going to tie a bunch of them, you just make a little example and just cut them all at once. Yeah. Production line. Yeah, if you want to tie a bunch of 16s, you tie a bunch of size 16 wing cases. That's it. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our peacock in. We've got to have peacock. And, you know, depending on a real small one, you use one real thin peacock. Yeah. Uh, a real big one, you might use four pieces. Yeah. Your peacock varies, you know, in, in size. But in this one, I think two will be just about right. So I got my peacock laid in, and again I tied it in right behind the bead, so you get nice uniformity. And we'll just kind of wrap a little thorax here. Okay, so we got our peacock thorax tied in there. And then you cut your thread. Well, we should have that, because what ha What do you do when you cut your thread? Well, what you do is... You don't throw the fly away, do you? Is you start crying. Yeah. You go roll up in a ball in a corner. You just go right back in go there. Go right back in there, and don't miss a beat. I mean, if anybody thinks we don't cut thread, they're... <laughs> I did that on purpose, just so I could show how you yeah, get back I, on. I'm glad you did that, because I wouldn't, you know... I would have not thought <laughs> ill of you uh, of doing it. Because I've never cut my, my accidents. I've never cut my thread before. You know, I've never broke a fish off on a you know a dry fly on a on a no, rising fish ever either. either. 
But sometimes when you're given a class, you demonstrate how to oh, do it. Of course. It is absolutely the way it should be. Okay, next step, you can use uh, partridge, hung Hungarian partridge, Ooh, I love it. brown, or what I've gone to for the most part is a uh, henback because they come in so many different colors mm -hmm. and they're a little tougher feather. Mm -hmm. So you just pull a little. Well, they easier to find too. Finding good partridge yeah, at times is good, tough. Yeah, exactly. Finding good partridge is tough. Right. Handbacks are a lot easier. And I'm going to lay the legs in on each on each side, and we're going to come right back to about the point. The points of the legs are going to go right back to the point. Okay, this is another thing I want to show. If you don't have enough buildup behind the uh, bead, your legs go straight out. Right. So. If they're going straight out, you just kind of build it up a little bit. Yeah. Huh. Very good. And everybody out there has had that problem. Then lay in there just about right. Yep. Looks good. And another little thing is when you're pulling legs off a feather like this to get the same size legs on both sides is you can pull off your one bunch and then make, make your next bunch exactly the same number of fibers just do it on the other side do it on the other side so you and you just lay those in and the points of the feathers right back about by the point of the hook doing some nice slack when you do that too John yeah so you can kind of reposition them yep make sure they're finesse tying is what it's called that they're about the same length we but got us a copper john here, by golly. Oh, I know one thing you don't have done. What? That's that stuff you put on it, that epoxy. Yeah. John is an expert on epoxies. <laughs> I don't know if I'm an expert, but I can mix it up. So you clip off the butt ends, and then you can either pull this over, if you luck out, get it in one step, but I usually pull yeah. the thin skin first tie it off. Boy, I like that thin skin. Look how it glistens right oh, now. Oh, it's great. And then I try to position that that flash. That flash right in the middle. You know, uh, one of the things that we've found, John, but we and do... And that's a done deal. I know it's a done deal, but i got to tell you about the flash here. The flash, when you see these flies underwater, it just gets your attention. I Just mean, that when, one little strand. Oh yeah, went one little strand. I mean, when you're we're filming these flies drifting, you just see the flash off of it, and it's really, really neat. And the fish have got to see it because you know real insects do the same thing; they reflect light. Oh sure, sure. If you read Mike Loss's book, you'll know just how much. Hey, we're not giving we're not giving uh, him any uh, free advertising, are we? <laughs> That's sure one heck of a book, isn't yeah. it? Spring Creeks. It's a great book. It is a but classic. He talked about light on light on. Uh, on flies and and you know that's another thing you see one strand you can see when people are putting 50 strands oh, of stuff know. on streamers it's just yeah. like a total overkill yeah yeah i mean you don't need you just you know wow now let's very, rotate it now now put oh. it in there in the vise here let's see, let's see the rotation i'm real slow here Ooh, man does that look neat and see those portions are just about right can I split your buyouts out a little bit that's a genuine Copper John as tied by the Copper John man. Yeah. Yes. Okay, one, one of the things we got to do and here. And then what you do is you just, you know, for your final stop, you just mix some boxy up and just put it over the wing case.